ein Blas, der Tropfen Blut färbt die Lippen einer Kranken. Also ruht auf diesen Tönen ein vernichtungssüchtiger Reiz. Wilder Lust, Akkorde stören der Verzweiflung eisgen Traum. Wie ein blasser Tropfen Blut färbt die Lippen einer Kranken. I mean, Pierre Hollunier was based on a stage production of Schönberg's um, uh, sort of avant-garde opera, Pierre Hollunier. But even in the stage production, I used it, my references were, were very cinematic. I, 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 re I referenced uh, silent film. I had projections of films on on stage. I was referencing a silent film aesthetic and and very much a German expressionist film aesthetic. So. So it was just very natural for me to make an experimental film from that production. So I took the, the documentation of the stage production and then shot new material with the same scenario and actors on location in Berlin and combined them using, again, references to Grand Guignol, um, uh, German Expressionism, and silent film. So for me, it's like just... Um, I'm a I'm a cinephile and I'm a I'm a I'm a student of, of cinema. So uh, I I'm interested in all genres of, of, of cinema, uh, uh, you know, and 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 their conventions and how the convention the cinematic conventions and language has evolved. And so it's uh, it's very interesting for me to play play with that. Um, and in Pierre Holder, and the idea of the avant-garde. I mean. I've always been influenced by. Uh, I, I like to think that I'm a, a, a member, or at least influenced by the, the great gay avant-garde. I think that I talked about before, starting with Genet and, and Anger and Jack Smith and Paul Morrissey and and John Waters. When it opened in Berlin, the theater production got mixed reviews. Some people loved, absolutely loved it, and other people hated it. And there was a lot of discussion about it. And and. Uh, I just thought it would be, we, sp we spent so much work on it, and Susanna Zaxa in particular, she likes, took four, she, you know, had no experience in any kind of opera or kind of uh, official, like, uh, voice training, so she took, like, months and months and months of vocal training to, 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 um, to tackle the, the, the Schoenberg, and, um, and, and she, uh, uh, and Premiel, of course, it's his, inter Premiel Petrovic, the conductor we worked with, it's his interpretation of, 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 um, of Schoenberg's work, and we tried to stay as, as, uh, uh, as faithful to it as we could within the limitation, like, uh, regardless of how strange a direction we took it in, you know, I mean, musically, it's, it's a, it's, um, it's very much uh, faithful to, the, to Schoenberg's spirit. Uh, um, and uh, so then I just thought it would be cool to try to make it into an experimental film so that our work, the work could be seen more widely. So then uh, Jürgen applied for some money from the uh, media board in Berlin and to make it into an experimental film and we spent a week shooting additional material on various locations in Berlin and then combined it with the stage footage. And I kind of came up with the idea of using the stage footage almost as Pierrot's uh, dreamscape or his fantasy scape that he's kind of projecting uh, as he's kind of he's a per, um, kind of cabaret performer and that's you know he sees his life as a kind of performance of everything that's going on i uh, i i studied uh, a lot of experimental and formalist film as well when i was uh in, uh, in my 20s in toronto there was a there was a great uh experimental film venue there called The Funnel that showed a lot of uh, experimental films. Um, I, I, I just love um, any experimentation or, or, or with form um, and any kind of um, uh, almost like revolt against, against narrative. Um, my films are all narrative but they usually somehow um, fight against uh, the hegemony of narrative, you know. Um, Robin Wood actually always talked about, uh, you know, how the language of mainstream narrative film is can be almost a, a kind of um, uh, 
fascism in a way because it it uh, it really uh, um, creates a, a kind of spectacle that that is very propagandistic, it, it, you know, in its form. I just listened to the music first, and I was trying to just think of what kind of mood it, it, it gave me, and then I did research about Schoenberg and Grand Guignol, as I was saying, and I found out that he was heavily influenced by Grand Guignol, and that's why the, the poetry by um, Giraud, Albert Giraud, is, it's based on 21 poems uh, by this uh, French poet, and uh, the imagery is grotesque and violent, and and the other thing was, it, uh, Pierre, uh, Schoenberg's Pierrot is written for a male character, but it's always performed by a woman, uh, historically. So that stuck in my mind as something like to that seemed like a could be a transgendered kind of idea that I could incorporate. Um, and then I thought of this real life story that happened in Toronto in 1978, which briefly. Uh, there was a, a woman living as a man, a trans man, but before any kind of transsexual, um, con you know, public consciousness or anything. And, and um, he had a girlfriend who didn't know that he was uh, a biological woman. And and um, and uh, when the father, the rich, wealthy father, found out, he forbade his daughter from seeing this guy. And so he actually hired a, a cab, went to the outskirts of town cut off his genitals, crazy glued them to his um, vagina, and, to sh and went and showed the father that he had re a real cock. So I didn't make that up. That really happened. So um, I just thought, it, it just for me, it coalesced with the violent imagery, the grand guignol, the gendered idea of a, a woman playing a, a, a male role. And, um, uh, you know, narrative is... is um, is a kind of seductive um, te technique which, which kind of um, almost uh, brainwashes uh, the audience somehow. So any film that, um, that uh, kind of questions that kind of narrative um, form or, or disrupts it or, or kind of uh, uh, or even uh, destroys it, you know, um, interests me, which is, you know, why I, I'm so into all those deconstructive uh, narrative films, American films from the early 70s. I've always used imagery in all my f in my films that's very politically incorrect. Um, I've had I've you know dealt with with subjects like rape and and um, uh, sexual violence and fetish, extreme fetish, and all that kind of stuff. So for me, it's some it, it's all about context. I mean, I I, do, I, do, I try to think that I don't play around with this imagery lightly, although sometimes I do it even with comedic elements, you know, but it's always a, a, a kind of conscious uh, kind of um, uh, sort of struggle with the kind of uh, um, the implications of this kind of violence and, and, um, and also putting it in a camp context or putting it in the context of Grand Guignol where it was just kind of like Grand Guignol Theatre was the original gore, you know, really. And so, um, the, uh, I've, and then I started using gore in my films as early as Hustler White, you know, and, uh, and I've made two zombie movies. I've made L.A. Zombie, which is playing later this week, which is a gore, a gore zombie movie with, with uh, about a, an alien zombie who finds dead bodies in Los Angeles and fucks them back to life, basically. So. Um, so, you know, I deal in very extreme sexual uh, and kind of violent imagery, but, and, it has, and of course, I've had a lot of resistance uh, towards it um, uh, in many manifestations. You know, I've had um, everything from bomb threats to, like, uh, picketers outside my uh, screenings uh, for certain films and, 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 uh, and, of course, lurid headlines and, and all sorts of stuff. So. Um, but that, as a filmmaker, that's kind of, kind of what interests me, is that kind of area of that kind of uh, area of that which is not supposed to be re represented, and then how you approach it, and how far you can push it, and, uh, and, uh, and what kind of effect it has on the audience. And, and so it, it just intrigues me to, to, uh, to try to represent the unrepresentable in, in some way. Lullaby and good night in the sky stars are bright. May the moon's silvery beams bring you sweet dreams. Close your eyes now and rest. May these eyes.
protect.